Next, I want to take you to a different example, and that's the catch-all. Excel is our catch-all because even though we have an extensive list of accounting packages on the import list, there are some accounting software packages out there that are not included on our list. And to that end, we still want to be able to automate the process of getting the data in. If your client can provide you an Excel sheet with the account number, description, and balance, we have the ability to import that using the Excel file import. Here we choose once again the Charter of Accounts and General Ledger Balances, which is your trial balance, or the full GL detail if you have it. And then we choose the Excel file, which we'll is hit the Browse button, locate the file that we want to import, and click OK. Now, I'm going to select a worksheet number one. In the Excel file, there's multiple tabs. One indicates the leftmost tab. If the trial balance is not on that tab, then you have to count over the tabs, or easier yet, in Excel, grab the tab and move it all the way to the left. We also have the ability to create a record layout. Now, I have imported from this file in the past, so I saved that record layout when I was finished. And here it is right there, so I'm going to open that up to make this go a little bit quicker. In this file, it's only set up as yearly. If I had other period date sequences, I could bring in monthly, quarterly, whatever it happens to be that we need and have available to us. Hitting Next is going to open up Excel in the background and then present us with the table of information from that Excel worksheet. I'm skipping the first row. I don't want to bring in the titles because that will come in as an account number. Also, if there's any underlines or subtotals or final totals, all we would do is just check off the item that we don't want to bring in, it grays it out, and it will not be brought in. I want that one, so I'll just hit Next. Here in the field details, because I had saved the layout and used it, it's already been defined. But if we want to add a field detail, we click on the column heading and specify the item that it is by selecting it in the drop-down list. And there's a significant amount of items that can be brought in for various balances, actual, budget and forecast for the various years. If you have a multiple period file, it's going to show you not only the opening balance, but period one. Your year-end balances should go into period one because your opening balances will be reflected based on your year-end close from the prior year. Custom balances can also be imported. All of our various groupings from mapping, leachies, all the way through to ratio classes can be brought in as well. And some other options, for example, tax items, units, Giphy for our Canadian users, tax export codes and M3 codes for our US users. Foreign exchange rates can also be imported and custom balances rates, so foreign exchange for custom balances. All of that can be brought in and it's just a matter of if the column exists to select the appropriate column title. In the event I get the title wrong, I have to switch it back to ignore before I can reselect the item that I meant to select the first time. Some of the columns have extra information for more comprehensive imports. When your account numbers include divisions and subaccounts, etc., we can go into the advanced area to break it out between account number, entity, division, and subaccount. Account description is available here. My statement type. Now, most times you're not going to get a statement type. All that's going to be applied when I map it. Similarly, lead sheet, uh, ratio class, and so on. This is the first year that I'm dealing with this file, so I'm going to bring in three years worth of balances here. And with my balances, we can specify debit and credit columns, debit only or credit only, as well as a positive import as credit. Moving to the advanced specifications, here we have a number of items available to us. If the account was not created previously and we did not have the statement type associated with it, we can choose the default association for account type. When we assign the map number, it's going to update it for us anyways, so I'm just going to leave mine at income statement. We can accumulate balances when accounts are shown more than once, clear periods of being that are being imported. If I'm re-importing to the same period, I should clear it so that I don't have any ghost information left over. Rounding balances, well, in my rounding, I can round to 1,000, millions, billions, etc. And we just want to specify a balance sheet account and an income statement account to plug the rounding difference to on each of those statements. Other options are available here. However, most times, you're probably just going to move right past the screen and hit Next. If you are dealing with periodic balances outside of yearly, you'll want to consider the balances down here. Are they being imported as year-to-date or net change? Do they include the prior period's adjustments? Let us back those out so they're not double counted. Uh, do you want to import month two's balances 
all the way through month three to month 12 for subsequent periods until you import month three for month four through month 12, et cetera, for comparative purposes while you're in your current period. And there are other options down here at the bottom as well. So keep all of this in mind as you're doing the import to make sure that your numbers are coming in exactly how you want them. And when we're finished, we hit the import. I'm just saying yes to resave my layout and click OK. It tells me exactly what has changed in my import and I can click OK. And again, in the trial balance, we've got the numbers. I go through the mapping process again and everything's pushed out to the various documents in the document manager, including the financial statement. Because I have the ratio class included in this particular import, the mapping autofill, auto map will work for me here as well. Keeping in mind when I do this, I do have to validate these map numbers, and that just means checking to make sure that the map number description associated with the account is the appropriate item that you're looking for.